What's up guys, this is EJ Nave here with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about some hitting tips for MLB The Show 19. Just as proof to see my credibility, here I am, number 122, a little lower than I'd like because I did take a month off from the game. If I didn't do that, I'd probably be top 50, top 40. But my numbers, 339 average, OPS over 1,000, slugging almost 650. I know what I'm doing. I know I can help all of you guys all become better hitters. So the first thing I'm going to point out to you right now are the settings I would recommend for hitting. So right here, very basic settings. I would definitely do zone. Don't use directional. Don't use whatever the other one is, pure analog. Not a good idea. Zone gives you the best user input, the best ability to square up baseballs, and the best ability to be a good hitter. Um, and then input type would be buttons. Don't want to be flicking the analog stick. Uh, I turn the PCI on. I know some people turn it off. I did for a while. It worked all right, but I'd still recommend keeping it on. It's just a nice thing to track the ball with. It's a nice visual thing to have. And I would rec I, it's honestly just personal preference with that, but I'd recommend keeping it on. I personally use Wedge. I know people that use uh, Reticle. Um, they're both very good. I personally like Wedge better because it has the dot, but if you feel more comfortable with Reticle, go ahead with that. Uh, dynamic, I've never really seen being used by any top players, so I wouldn't really recommend that. Uh, I haven't really seen it in action. Buckshot's not good. Do not recommend that at all. It's hard. To, it's harder to uh, see the ball with it. Classic is all right. Uh, outline is pretty good, actually. Uh, that one's not a bad one. Uh, back to wedge. So yeah, I'd recommend wedge or reticle for that one. Uh, those are going to give you probably the best visuals, the best tracking. Hitting view, strike zone, strike zone's the best, gives you the closest view of the pitcher, gives you the closest view of the pitchers coming in. I know people that do use strike zone 2 with success. Uh, I've seen people use strike zone 3. Strike zone high, I would say, is probably the second best behind strike zone. I still recommend strike zone, but any of the strike zones are honestly fine. Uh, even if you really want to go further back, zoom's alright. I would not recommend any of these other ones. They will not help you at all. It becomes very hard to decipher what's a ball with a strike and how to react in time. So I just keep with strike zone personally. Uh, this literally doesn't matter. I prefer dynamic. It's personal preference. So the next thing I'm going to recommend is that you go into custom practice. You can do challenge of the week. So challenge of the week is pretty much um, here. I'll go down here. But challenge of the week is basically when you you face like a certain pitcher with a certain hitter every week. Uh, there's prizes and stuff if you do well, but it cycles through different difficulties. So it's good for practicing on different difficulties and slowly getting warmed up. Uh, I did used to uh, do this a lot, like, and uh, I felt I found it good, but I feel like at the same time it's better to just practice on one because I feel like doing this kind of screwed up my timing a little bit. So you can do that if you want; it works for some people. But I personally like going to custom practice. Uh, and here's a trick with custom practice you're gonna actually want to be the home team if you're the away team I don't know why this works, but if you're the away team uh, The pitcher almost always throws you fastballs the pitcher rarely throws you any breaking balls It's very strange to me why it works like that But be the home team when you're hitting just so that you can get a steady assortment of different pitches So um, if you go down here, you can find some fake teams right here. These teams are legend teams so these are teams of players that uh, are not active uh, so legends uh, wouldn't be flashbacks either just legends I recommend choosing one of these three uh, just because if you do that then you can practice with some more cards that you would actually use in uh, Diamond Dynasty so uh, for the away team I like doing expansion era boomers just because I like the pitchers on there and then for home team uh, I always do the long ball beasts uh, you're gonna doesn't really matter what stadium you go to um, I'm gonna personally go to date palm all right, so what you're going to do once you're going to reach here is you're going to go to create play. You're going to click on this. You're going to go to batting, so it sets you as hitting. You're going to go to repeat. Uh, I mean, this is just optional. I would recommend repeat play just so you can practice with the same hitter. Uh, so select that, and then go to whatever pitcher you want. I like Nolan Ryan because he throws hard. It really warms me up. Uh, and then for hitter, I like going Frank just that's ready ready, but you can select any pitcher you want there. So there's a whole bunch. And then, of course, there's the other legend teams, too, that you can choose from. Uh, so just choose whatever you want there and then the same goes for uh, for hitters so you can choose whatever hitter you want from each legend team like I said I like going with Frank Thomas uh, so going uh, back into options you're gonna want to choose legend 
um, just so that it gives you the highest pick speeds. You can go to sliders to increase pick speeds if you want. I just don't really like the hassle of doing that. I find legend pick speeds work just fine. Uh, and the PCI size is small too, so it really uh, forces you to practice your PCI placement. I do not want to exit. Alright, so from here, I'm going to show you what I do when I'm at the plate. So I like to move around my PCI before each pitch and wait for it to come in and obviously time it up. So the reason why I like moving it before each pitch is that I can kind of keep my finger loose. If I keep it stationary, I'll show you a stationary one. If I just keep it stationary from where I start, I mean, I can hit with it, but I just feel like it, my reactions are a little bit slower. So yeah, just moving it around helps your reactions be a little bit faster, helps your timing be a little bit more crisp as we swing at a terrible pitch. I'm not really warmed up today, but yeah, just go here, just practice against uh, the high pitch speeds with a small PCI. Practice taking some pitches as I slowly get warmed up myself. Um, yeah, so just keep do keep moving around. I like moving in a circular motion. You can move whatever motion works for you. Just keep your thumb loose is what I recommend. So another thing that I do, if you notice, after I do that, I personally like to start sort of middle in type thing. And then there's a nice tang from Frank there. But um, I like starting at middle in because I feel like like sort of middle high. Because I feel like just for me, it's the most comfortable. I've used that for years. It really doesn't matter where you start as long as you experience results. That's just personally what I use. I know people that start center. I could never really do that. I know people that start low because they like to drive up. Whatever works for you. I just like up and in because it feels the most comfortable for me. And I feel like I can drag it down to hit low pitches like that. I'm going to get the second there with Frank. So as for a timing mechanism, there isn't a specific secret for me. I know people that have specific things that they do between each pitch, but I just honestly stare at the ball the entire time when the pitcher's uh, in his delivery. Um, just pay attention to the ball, watch it come out of his hand, watch where the pitch is going, and just take some pitches, look at pitches, see kind of how different pitches are moving. Uh, I, honestly, just go into BP and just practice for hours and hours is my honest opinion with that because once you see more and more pitches, you'll get more and more used to the timing, more and more used to the movement, more and more used to where each of the pitchers are going to be going. So do one more swing here and then we'll take into an actual game. There's a nice swing from Frank. It's going to be caught, but yeah, so let's get into an actual game. I'll show you in a game situation. All right, so we are rated 931. It'll probably be a legend game. It could be Hall of Fame. We'll see. All right, so we are facing the Springfield Bombers, Sky 2919. It's got Flaherty starting. We can hit Flaherty. Let's go and get some runs on the board early. All right, so we are able to score this inning. Let's get some runs on the board. So early in the game, I like to be a little bit more patient than normal. Just take some pitches, see how the pitches look out of the hand. Just take a ball away from Wagner. Still moving around the PCI, still keeping my finger loose, watching the ball out of his hand. See, we got ourselves ahead in the count now, so now it puts more pressure on the pitcher. I generally like to get pitchers at least 10 pitches in inning, so I can just drive down the pitch count eventually as he throws a strike there. Getting ahead in the count also just helps in general, helps to get rewarded more. And then we rip a single through the left side. So putting yourself ahead in the count allows you to get more hittable pitches, which then therefore allows you to get more hits in general. So, okay, layoff single with Wagner. Now we got Babe up. Still going to take some pitches, take a strike. Seen the ball well. And now we're going to drive a base hit up the middle. We're going to be able to get the third on that. I Now we're going to stay a second. So now we're able to get two hits right away. Now we're in a threatening position. So, especially when you have runners on base, be even more patient. Guys are going to try to pitch around you. Guys are going to try to get you to ground to double plays and such. So, yeah, he's clearly trying to get me to roll over on that slider. So I'm just going to not bite. See, now 3-0, and now he's in danger. Now he's on the defensive. Throws a strike. That's fine. He's probably going to groove one. Or not. He throws ball four. Being patient pays off. Now we have an extremely threatening situation with Teddy up. So let's see if he can deliver here. Take a first pitch strike. Always a good idea. Two good pitches. An important skill in this game is not swinging at pitchers that you know you can't hit regardless, even if they're strikes, as Teddy's going to hit one in the gap. It's going to score at least two. We're going to keep 92 speed at third. 
But also, having the ability to go with pitchers is something I recommend. Try to go with pitchers as much as possible. Don't try to yank everything like some people do. Just try to go with them. Just try to relax. Just watch the ball out of the pitcher's hand and just go with the pitch. It's something that takes practice, but once you get used to it, it's a great benefit to have. It's not going to be the best hit I'll ever get, but it's going to work. It'll get two runs in. So as you can see, since we put the pressure on early, since we took pitches early, now we put him in a position where now he's just grooving pitches and we're hitting them. Another reason why it's very important to be very patient early on in the game. Probably could have hit that pitch, but it's fine. Still nobody out. Missed a fastball, should have hit. Another important thing is just being able to catch up to those high fastballs. I know I didn't do it that time, but definitely one of the main things, again, going back to batting practice is just being able to train yourself to see those high fastballs and be able to pull them because if you're late on them people will exploit that all the time and you'll be screwed see i went with that high fastball i was a little bit under it but i still timed it up it gives the impression to your opponent that oh you can time up fastballs and it makes them throw other pitches in this game breaking balls are generally harder to command than fastballs which often uh leads to breaking balls hanging now we're able to hit a gapper with that again grooves me another pitch because he doesn't want to pitch around me he doesn't want to get more and more base runners going to stay second and third in that situation. We're going to have the pitcher up, see if we can do something here. With pitchers, I'd recommend taking the first pitch. They're going to throw you a lot of strikes, but generally the main thing with pitchers is increasing pitch count. When your pitcher's up, there's a pretty low chance he'll get a hit, so just being able to at least increase the opposing pitcher's pitch count is very important. As you can see, he's throwing balls now. That's a wasted pitch. I'm probably not going to get a hit here. See, it's fine. Even though we struck out, we still raise the pitch count. We still get it up. Now he's up over 30 pitches, and we're up 4 nothing. Now he's in a very compromising position right now. He threw another scoreless inning. Let's try to score some more runs. So once again, early in the inning, early in the count, we're going to be patient. He's back to throwing balls again. So having sort of a balance between being patient and being aggressive really throws pitchers off, I find. They don't really know what to throw. They don't know whether to be aggressive or whether to be more passive. But either way, they get flustered, and then they start hanging pitches or throwing pitches like that that can easily be hit. That ball kind of died. I was on that. But again, just being able to work deep in the count, lower the confidence. Another thing, when you're being patient, it lowers pitch confidence, which also directly impacts performance. If pitch confidence is lowered, you generally get rewarded more on balls that would normally be outs. All right, let's score some more runs. We lead it off with Ted. We're at 40 pitches at the start of the third inning, which is really good. I like getting pitchers that high in the pitch count. Like I said, lowers the confidence, lowers the energy. Look how low the confidence and energy is. Generally, the energy and confidence are not that low by the third inning at all. So being able to do that, get some runs off a pitcher early, get them to a high pitch count early is really important for the rest of the game. So Reem Patient Games pitching around me again. We're up 2-1 the count. Now he's going to probably try to throw a strike here. And he does, and we're able to hit at the center for a base hit. So again, a big, another big part of hitting is anticipating what a pitcher is going to do. If you feel like in a situation he's trying to pitch around me, but now he's at a point where if he continues to pitch around me, he's going to get himself in trouble, he's going to groove one, then know when pitchers are going to throw that. Generally, it just comes with practice and just knowing situations. I've been playing this game for a long time, so I know when pitchers are going to throw things. Good pitch there. Throws the hanging slider. Yeah, I was on that pitch. Can't really do much about that. A big part of this game is not getting discouraged even when stuff doesn't go your way. Because eventually stuff will start to go your way. Ballinger hits it to deep left. I think that's going to get out. It will. Again, a big skill in this game, being able to go with pitches. I saw the change up on the outside half. I didn't try to pull it. If I had pulled it, I would have just rolled over. Now he throws me a fastball down the plate. Again, he's forced to go back to that. We're going to get a gapper on that. I can be able to get the second. And we're again going to be able to clear the pitcher spot so he won't have to lead off next inning, which is always important. All right, let's try to extend this lead. Leading off with Wagner again, who's one for two. Going to take first pitch here. First pitch of the inning. He's going to throw me a good pitch. Probably not going to be able to do anything with that, even if I do swing. So good idea to just take that and increase the pitch count. And now he hangs one, and we're going to unfortunately not get a hit, but... Just the main premise of him, of just being patient and forcing him to throw a mistake. In that case, it didn't work out for us, but regardless, we're still forcing him to throw those pitches that we can hit. Be patient again. He's going to throw a ball. Good pitch. We would not have hit that anywhere if we had swung. Another take. See, now we're heading the count again. Now we're going to force him to throw a pitch that we can hit. 
See, throws the pitch we can hit, throws the hanging slider, and we square it up to left field for another home run. Now we have a seven run lead, just continue to force him to throw pitches that he can hit. We're not even on that, but still, because it's such a poor pitch, it still gets out. Now he's gonna force another pitch right down the plate. This time we're gonna line out. Another pitch we can hit though, putting him on the defensive. A lot of hitting in this game is just mind games. Just looking into the mind of the pitcher. What is he going to throw? How, where is he going to throw it? And what count is he going to throw? What situation is, gonna, is he going to throw it? And being patient, again, just really reinforces just forcing a pitcher to be on the, on the defensive. When you're patient, when you get ahead in the count, now the pitcher is at a big disadvantage. Now he feels like he has to throw a pitch down the plate. And that's when you capitalize. And that's why I've scored seven runs this game. I could be honestly hitting even better right now, but... Even just the very basic principle of just being patient, waiting for your pitch and hitting it. I know it sounds super cliche, but it works. Trust me, it works. I've gone from just an all right player to being a very, very good player just by just calming down, just being patient, just watching pitches and then just drilling them. All right, so we've frustrated him to the point where he actually just has his position player out. He's just gonna pitch with him. So, with a position player, there's actually a little bit of strategy here. Generally, a lot of people, that's, wow. A lot of people's position players, they tend to get over-aggressive. They tend to swing at everything. I've actually had success in an absolute emergency one time. I had to face a really good player with a position player. And I was actually able to get him out because he started getting way too aggressive. He started getting too jumpy. So, if someone gets frustrated to the point where they do bring out a position player, just still do the same thing. Just lay back, wait for pitches, and then explode. We're going to give up a home run on that. Or we're going to get a home run, I should say, on that. 8 nothing. We're two runs away from the Mirza. Let's try to get it. We're going to go ahead and take that. There's no point in swinging at it. And we're going to drill that right to center. Still waiting, though. He threw me a hittable pitch. I did hit it hard. It was just unfortunate. That was right at the center fielder. We are now one run away from the Mercy. Yeah, we squared that up pretty decently. Dude gets a base hit. Threw me a hang and change up. Position player change up is going to get crushed. The right fielder. All right, we can hit normal pitchers better than position players. And okay, he's just going to quit. So we win 9 nothing. Not honestly our best offensive performance in the hitting tips video, but we still do score 9. Still got the point across. Again, just being patient, waiting for pitches, waiting for your pitch, and just exploding on it. And we did that countless times during that game. One easily. So just some final notes before I end this video. The first thing, like I've been talking about this whole time, just be patient early on in the game. Wait for your pitch. Take some pitches. Take first pitch if you need to. Take the first strike if you need to. Do whatever you need to do to just see the ball, to get used to the pitcher, to get used to the way the ball is moving, and to lower confidence. Once you do that, you force them to throw pitches down the plate, and then you hit. Uh, settings, again, just keeping it at strike zone, using zone i like wedge personally any one of those are honestly all right but main thing using strike zone and using zone using directional and using fur further views from the pitcher are not going to help you at all it's going to keep you at some of the lower difficulties if you want to get to world series recommend definitely using zone and strike zone another thing that i haven't mentioned in this video i highly recommend getting a monitor and getting control freaks so i actually can't remember the exact monitor i have i know it's an asus i know it's one ms i highly recommend getting a monitor that with the lowest input lag possible and the lowest ms possible so like i said mine's one ms it's an asus monitor you can get an asus or benq i'll post a link for just a random monitor that i see has good specs and will definitely do well Having a monitor like that will help improve your reaction time, uh, will help you to be able to time up those high fastballs, those fastballs period, especially on higher difficulties that before I got a monitor I often struggled against, so definitely recommend getting that. They're really not that expensive, they're less expensive than TVs. Um, and then finally, control freaks. So control freaks are basically these little things that you can put on your controller and what they basically do is they help you a have better grip and b it allows you to move it in a better fashion so you're not chopping your pci an issue i often uh, that often occurred to me when i first started playing was that i used to really drop my pci when there was a pitch like down the middle or like slightly down i would drop too far and then pop it up so those help to lessen that highly recommend getting those two uh, monitors maybe 150 bucks 
uh, which isn't terrible. It is an investment, but it's definitely a worthwhile investment. And Control Freak's only like 20 bucks. You can just pick one up at any store, really. Uh, I personally use Green Sea QCs. Uh, I saw they restocked it. Um, I'm not sure right now if it's on their website, but you can probably get from a third party retailer. I'll put a link again in the description of where you can get one. But yeah, guys. Appreciate you guys watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any further questions about anything to do with hitting, just uh, comment down below. I'll make sure to answer them. Yeah, guys, once again, make sure to like, subscribe, follow my Twitter, follow my Twitch. And yeah, this is EJ Naves signing out. Have a good day, guys. Peace.